I think it's about time we made a video, isn't it? Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I know what you're thinking. Holy crap. Holy crap, he's uploading a video. Yeah. I'm also testing this homemade lapel microphone. Don't know how well it's going to work. Yeah. It's pretty how you're doing, but we'll see how things go. Anyway. I think it's about time to replace this amplifier. Now, it's not because this amplifier's crap, or it doesn't work, or anything like that. In fact, it's a really good amplifier, and it does sound really good. I mean, should do. It's a Class A amplifier. But the thing is, you know, with the temperatures rising and everything, you know, this is going to make the room pretty hot, so I want to use a different amplifier. So, I was going to replace it with this little one. It's a nice little Class D amplifier. And I hooked it up yesterday and found one channel on it is completely dead. So, that's what this episode of Call Duty Clem's Electronic Workshop is going to be about. The other reason I want to replace this amplifier is because, well, as you can see, it takes up way more space than it really needs to. Another reason is because, as I have an external volume control hooked up to this, that means I've never had to adjust the volume on the amplifier itself. So, it's always been in this position, and I don't want that to burn itself into the VFT, so... At least it's been a nice day today. Nice and hot, just the way I like it. So I had a nice bike ride out in the country, where it's nice and quiet. Unlike round here, where there's always some kind of noise going on. I mean, earlier today, in fact, just a few minutes ago, somebody out there was having a party with clapping and fireworks going off. I mean, I could understand if this was like birthday party or something like that, but they do this frequently. It's ridiculous. If I ever find out who it is who keeps having these parties, I'm going to get one of those fireworks. Shove it up his ass and light the fuse. And maybe that will stop it. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Also, I'm trying out a different microphone. I want you to tell me whether this micro whether you think this microphone sounds better, it's got a better high frequency response, or whether I should put this microphone back in and use that one. Anyway, I think the first thing to do is just go around the circuit with a continuity test to make sure there are no open traces or anything like that. So, I'm going to grab my multimeter when I can find it. Right, so, first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the signal is actually getting into this thing. Now, I've gone around both sides of the board, and it appears that our input jacks are connected straight up to the um, potentiometer, and then go into these two capacitors. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into one of the jacks there, put my meter into continuity, right, so I'm going to connect one end right there, and let's see if we get a beep on any of the points on this potentiometer. Okay, we have a beep there. Actually, I better make sure that this... Yeah. Just wanted to make sure that wasn't all the way open or closed, or that would have really thrown off the readings. Let me just do that again, just to make absolutely sure, because I've got this at the halfway position now, so... Shouldn't throw off the readings now. Okay, yep, that one is definitely connected. Let's try the other channel, so we should have a beep here. Yep. Alright, let's see if the potentiometer itself is working, so I'm going to turn this all the way up. So we should get a beep. Yep, we have a beep there. Alright, let's try the other channel. Do we have continuity here? And yes, we do. So, next thing to do is make sure that the signal is getting into these two capacitors. 
and obviously from there it's going to go into the chip. Let's just make sure we've got that, so I'll put this one of these here. No beep there. Do we get a beep here? Yep, we do, but it's kind of... My probes aren't all that good. There we are. Alright, let's check the other one. We should have a beep here. Yes, so there's no problem with the input. Now it's kind of hard to see where these capacitors go after that, but I'm going to assume they go into the chip. Right, well, let's see if our output inductors, because maybe one of these has gone open. I'm now going to test the inductors to make sure none of these have gone open. We we'll need all four of these to be working. Yep, that one's alright. It's very hard to work with these service mount components. Oh, I'm not getting anything with this one, but that might just be my probes not contacting. Okay, so we have a possible reason right there. Mind you, I'm not getting anything with this one either. Or this one. I think I need some better meter probes. Well, since I'm flat broke and I don't know where my other meter probes have gone, I've had to improvise. I say flat broke. Cool Dude Claims Electronic Workshop has recently got a £60 donation. I don't know who did that, but if you are watching this, I'd like to thank you, and I'm going to put that to good use when I can, you know, when all the stores are that open. And my other probe has just decided to take a flying leap. Probably because it doesn't want to be on the show, because it is so absolutely terrible. Right, let's see if we can get in there. Okay, yep, that inductor's alright, and this is the one we couldn't test before. Yep, we got a beep there, so that one is also good. Alright, so I'm going to go through the circuit traces and make sure none of those are broken. Okay, well I've tested everything I can on this side. No broken traces or any opens there. So I'm going to make sure that each of these inductors is connected to its corresponding speaker. Now it looks, from what I can see from the traces, it looks like each one of these inductors goes to one of these connections here where the speakers connect. So let's have a look at that. I'll test this one. Because that definitely goes to a speaker out. Yep, that one's good. Let's have a look at this one. Yep, we have continuity there. And this one. And that's also good. And this one here. Ah, nothing here. Unless I'm just not making a good contact. This could be our problem. Of course, it would help if that would stop coming out. I need to make absolutely, definitely sure that that's not the case. Yeah, I am not getting anything here. Could we have found the culprit? Well, I definitely think we've found the problem. I had a closer look at the circuit board, and this is definitely supposed to be connected there, but it's open somehow. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to connect an auxiliary wire right there, and connect the rest of this amplifier up normally, and then we'll just jump the wire from, use the wire to jump here to here, and see if the other speaker fires up. Let's see if I was right. So, 
I've got a couple of speakers hooked up to this thing which you cannot see because I've just realized they're out of the camera shot. And I'm also trying both of those electric condenser microphones at the same time wired in parallel connected up to my preamp because that other microphone uh yeah that was very very tinny it sounded awful there was also a lot of <laughs> noises i don't know what that was coming from don't know if that's the fan blowing into the microphone or quite what that was i've got this hooked up i've got a music source playing so let's plug it in now doing this little bit of solder work there might have even brought back the dead channel so let's see if this works now Okay, now we're still only getting sound out of one speaker, so let's see if this works. It works! Of course, he says as the music fades out. Yep, but we've got both speakers playing. So that was the problem. I'm not going to play too much of that. You know, for copyright reasons, you probably couldn't hear it very well anyway. Well, I'm going to call this a success. So, this is what I've done. I've put a piece of wire going from this inductor to the speaker. I was going to try and do it on the other side of the board, but yeah, it just didn't work when I did that. So, I've had to put it on this side of the board. But both speakers are working, I'm playing some really, really crappy music I made years and years and years and years ago, so hopefully that won't give me a copyright strike, but this is the channel that wasn't working. Sounds alright. And this is the channel that's been fine all along. Also sounds good. So, yeah, I think it's about time to reinstate this amplifier and retire that Class A amplifier. Although, it does regulate itself, so it's not like every other Class A amplifier, but yeah. This little thing is going to become the amplifier, my main amplifier again. Well, my amplifier for my computer anyway. I'm just going to let this sit for a while, make sure that nothing starts releasing the magic smoke or anything like that. And yeah, I'll see you next time. So, until next time, goodbye.